There are no leaders in this building, no rank and file members in this building that condone violence, period. I've received threats since I assumed elected office, not only because of my position, but also because I'm Jewish. I've never blamed anyone in this body for that, period. It is reckless to use these incidents as media vehicles for political gain. To use such threats as political weapons is reprehensible. Enough is enough. It has to stop. And joining me now with reaction to all this are two people who have spent all day on Capitol Hill, Minnesota Congresswoman Michelle Bachman and Georgia Congressman Tom Price. Guys, welcome back to the program. Thank you, hey, Sean. Sean. All right, Congresswoman, let me, let me begin with you and, and your reaction to what Eric Cantor said, because I agree with him. Your thoughts? All right. I agree with him 100 percent. I was there this weekend. There were over 30,000 Americans that made their way at their own expense to come and express their displeasure with this health care bill. What I saw was a very orderly crowd who even picked up their own trash afterwards after themselves. Very, and they, the media wants you to think these were toothless hillbillies that came out. I met surgeons, anesthesiologists, family practice, CEOs, business owners, pharmacists. Uh, judges, uh, people from all walks of life and professionals. I did not see what was described today by the Democrats. I agree completely with Eric Cantor, and I, I think it is reprehensible to try and create this dust up for political gain. All right, and we all agree, Congresswoman, that any threat against any elected official is a threat against we the people. This, uh, we, uh, it's, it's, it's something that exactly. we all know in our heart. But the, the, the issue is anybody that's been in the public eye, including myself, and I'm sure both of you, in the course of your careers, have received some kind of threat. Congressman, is that true? A absolutely. Violence in the public square has, has no place whatsoever. Uh, but the leadership of the Democrat Party violated all of the rules about how you handle those threats. And that is that you don't blow them up, you don't magnify them, you don't politicize them. And that's exactly what they've done, which yeah. I agree with, uh, with Representative Cantor. It's reckless and it's irresponsible. You know, isn't this about Congresswoman? I think the reason that they released this, and we could all release them. And Republicans, Eric Cantor could have released sure. them, but they, he, you know, it's not something that you do. You work with law enforcement, you find the culprits, and they should be brought to justice. The issue, in my mind, is I think this is an attempt, and tell me if you agree or disagree, to smear an entire movement, the Tea Party movement. Of course that's what it is. It is about smearing. I know for myself, I've had vandalism perpetrated against me. I've had personal threats made against me, against my family. I purposely didn't disclose them to the public because that just tends to fan the flames. Yeah. And so I've, I've spoken with my other members. That's happened to other colleagues as well. We just don't publicize that. And I think that clearly this timing with this bill coming out now, knowing how much the public disagrees with it, they're mm -hmm. trying to smear people who disagree with the bill. All right, let's talk a little bit about what was going on in the vote that both of you just took tonight. Uh, this is it. This was the final bill. There was a lot of hope uh, among a lot of people that the bird rule and the reconciliation process might be stopped in the Senate. Congressman, what happened? Well, they jammed the whole thing through at this point, Sean. As you know, through the reconciliation process, closed down basically the opportunity for the Republicans in the Senate to offer any meaningful, meaningful alternative. This is the nail in the coffin for, uh, for health care in the United States at this point and in this year. Uh, it results in significant usurpation of power by the federal government to make medical decisions. It, it, it brings about an individual mandate dictating to every man, woman, and child in this nation what kind of health coverage they must have. Uh, it, it is a huge huge move in a direction that puts the government in charge. They trust government, but we trust people. A well, little known thing hid hidden in this bill, the reconciliation, is the takeover by the federal government of all student loans. Why that's in a health bill is beyond me. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. And Congresswoman, there's a lot of stories that came out to you. This, this is going to cost ca a Caterpillar the first year alone $100 million. Verizon came out with a strong uh, statement against this bill. Uh, the Chamber of Commerce came out. There's a Fox News poll. 79% of Americans believe that our economy is on the brink of collapse. We learned today that Social Security will be in the red today. There's no lockbox. Mm -hmm. So I, I guess the issue then comes down to is, 
Is John Boehner right? Is it possible that this could be stopped by defunding it if a Republican Congress is elected? Oh, absolutely. That's why all of our chips now are put on bringing us to a constitutional conservative majority in November, both in the House and in the Senate. Then we can slam the brakes on this government takeover of the private sector. With President Obama's signature on Tuesday on the health care takeover bill, recognize this is a, a full federal government takeover of 51 percent of the private economy in the last 18 months alone. That's why the positive news going forward is that we can put the brakes on this, repeal this bill after we elect a constitutional conservative president. Well, we can get back to prosperity. We just need to elect some constitutional conservatives. I've got a book out, Conservative Victory, Defeating Obama's exactly. Radical Agenda, launches Tuesday, because that's, I agree with you. I think that, and that's the whole premise yep. of the book. Uh, and we'll talk about it later in the program. Well, I will say this, Congressman, Fidel Castro supports the bill. So I, I'm sure that's a ringing endorsement for, for Barack Obama. Do you see that any of these constitutional challenges might be successful, Congressman?